In case you guys are interested, here's another uh, piece of this whole sorted puzzle. I pretty much know for a fact because he's a good guy and because he just is disgusted with me. Uh, beyond disgusted. Hence his little, you should call her up and say, Merry Christmas, I'm sure Satan will bring you something really nice this year. Joe is disgusted with her. Okay? That's why he wrote in that thing too, she's always wanted you out of the way. Remember, he's been in my life for 22 years. He was my boyfriend for six. Living. Okay. Oh, my love. Anyway. Um, but Joe's not an animal lover, and he's also, you know, whatever you want to call it, he's practical, he thinks you have to do what you have to do. Um, I can guarantee you if I were to give up this dog, Joe would invite me to go and stay with him. Well, because I get my thousand a month, you know what I mean? So he's, it wouldn't cost him anything. And Joe has ever so gently, but ever so bluntly put me down in the past because he invited me to come stay with him, come live with him for a while when all that, when the thing was with Donald and whatnot and I couldn't, I couldn't give up Omar. And he'll say things like, or I think, you know, he, I don't know if he's ever invited me since. Anyway, he'll, he'll say things like, you can always get another dog and whatnot. To him, it's just they're replaceable, they're not people. Okay? Under these circumstances, I don't even really want to talk to him. Because he would, that's what he would say. It's just a dog, give him up. You have to do what you have to do for you, and that's it. And the dog undeniably hinders anything that I would want to do, you know? And think about how I'm going to feel sitting here. No computer, no no TV. I'm not going to know what's going on in the world. I'm not going to have anything to do. I'm sure it'll be more and more tempting. Cause no, Joe hasn't made that offer, but he knows. He I know that he would because he has in the past. But I have to give up Omar. See? Anyway, that that's that's one thing. Another thing, to people who make me out to be verbally abusive towards my mom or whatnot. My mom and I, we have a mutual friend, my YouTube friend. Came to fly here. My mom couldn't wait to see her. Came to fly here on my, you know, my mom's dime because my mom has plenty of money. You know what I mean? So. And my friend, our friend, my mom, the mutual friend of m me, my whatever, me and my mom, learned firsthand that I wasn't exaggerating. My mom, when she's sick, remember she was nonstop sick from the moment she got discharged too soon from this, this hospital. Despite the fact that I begged the universe to, through them, you know, don't let it happen again. I told them the whole story about it, how it happened before, the poor woman. My mom, um, had to be hospitalized two days after coming home. Can you imagine coming home from a mental hospital where you have spent nearly a month, because it took about a few, five days or something for her to find a bed, you know, so you spent nearly a month total, not home, and then you, it's not your fault, you get discharged from this hospital in such a horrible condition that your family has no choice, absolutely no choice in the universe, but to section you two days later, I mean, send you to the, and you get sectioned two days later, can you imagine how I felt about that? Can you even imagine? how she must feel and that's why she's already upset you know and then she got the back-to-back -back hospitals and then I you know so Angie was just waiting to snake snake in the grass waiting to strike waiting for that day that I obviously thought would never come and I doubt she thought would ever come either because she's tried so hard according to my mom so I know it she said it to me and said it to my mom tried to poison my mom against me it just never worked Auntie saw her opportunity and she grabbed it for all it was worth. 
and she can go to her deathbed claiming otherwise. I just want to be trying to make my sister good ever. I know the truth. So anyway, my mom is hardly some little old lady. You know what I mean? She gets she gets combative. She gets belligerent. I'll sit there. I'm just giving you an example. I'll sit there and tell her she can feed what she ever she wants to Angel. But she's not going to give crap to Omar if I don't want him to have it, you know? And if I say, don't give that to Omar, Omar's had enough, or Omar's eaten, and whatever, and she, she I'm going to do what I want. I've heard her, she say that to me, yeah, I'm going to get irritated. And that's just one example out of many. That doesn't mean that I go around just yelling at yelling all the time for no reason, just taking my frustrations out on this sweet little old lady who doesn't do anything wrong. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. The neighbor down the street, she knows it's bullshit. She's like, when I've cried to her over this, that, whatever, I cried to the woman who takes care of Angela, but this, that, whatever, she's, that woman down the street is like, no one knows what goes on in that household but you. Yeah, no shit. And no one can possibly understand it unless they've actually lived it. Because if you cannot reason with somebody, if you can't whatever, and I, you, I, you're not the boss of me, I can do what I want, you're going to be fucking pulling out your hair, okay? And I have mental illness myself, okay? So I was walking this last time, I mean, these hospitals are responsible, but auntie gets to go to court and make it out like I caused all my mom's breakdowns and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, and all the asshole judge is going to see, because they're not going to look closely, of course not, it is, oh, this poor woman, she lives with her daughter who's been accused of verbally abusing her, and she's been in and out of mental hospitals six different times for three to four weeks at a time over the past year. What's going on here? It's got to be the daughter. Fuck you. Seriously. Fuck you. These hospitals discharged my mom too soon. I'm left to deal with the fallout of that. But she is not well. I've said before, last time I didn't know she was having a breakdown. Remember I told you with the thing with the railing and whatnot? I thought she was just being a, for lack of a better word, a bitch. Because she was being so freaking bitchy. Including when I, I couldn't, when she couldn't find her phone, as usual. You found my fucking phone! Screaming at me at the top of her lungs. Which I never do to her. But she has done that to me. Numerous times. And I'm not going to sit here and say I'm a saint and I've never lost my cool with my mom. But when her vi friend visited and I said, yeah, she wound up, this was when she blah, 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 and she, she called this old co-worker, blah, 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 whatever, and saying, blah, and then, and then the woman who's known my mom her whole life, since they were kids or something, is like, well, yeah, she laughed, she's like, well, your mom has a mouth on her, I'm like, yeah, I know, I know, she's not like some sweet little old lady who I just go around yelling at for no reason, okay? Nobody, if they don't, have never experienced it firsthand, they don't have a clue. Period. If you have not experienced it firsthand, where the person just is not going to listen to anything that you say, is not going to be reasonable at all, if you say anything negative to the person, you're being mean, including, like, Mom, you know, do you think I yelled? I didn't yell. But then I got upset when she's so nonchalant. Mom, you can't bring Angel out without a leash. Why would you do that? You know she. Oh, it's no big deal. She just walked with something. Mom, you can't do that. She only walked. She just. You. She's run away before. She's gone away from you out the door. You told me when I was in the shelter that she ran out the door. You. you she. You, the leash went out of your hand before when you weren't holding it tight when I first moved in and I told you to hold it tight, but you weren't doing it. You weren't listening to me, and that was the end result um, of not listening to me. Just because she walked beside you doesn't mean that she would do it always. I told you, my mom's mental illness causes her to think if something is one way once, it's that way always and can't possibly be different. I can't come up with examples. You just have to trust me on this one because it's happened before. It's happened before where she'll say something. Right? Like, doesn't, it could be something on the news. It could be whatever. It doesn't really matter because I can't think of it. It's just that she, her brain causes her to think if something's one way, i.e., if she takes Angel out without a leash and Angel's fine walking beside her, then it's not possible that Angel will ever run away if my mom just re continues to take Angel out without a leash. See? 
And obviously that's completely irrational, but that's how her brain works. So, call it mental illness, pre-dementia, whatever you want to call it. That's, And of course that's going to frustrate me on multiple levels. I don't want Angel to get killed. I don't want my mom to have to live with that, that it was her illness that caused her to, to not understand that her dog has run away from her before and will again, um, you know, could possibly, definitely, most likely, again, if some, she sees an animal or a person or both or whatnot. And I don't want her to have the same attitude about Omar. Where she's so afraid that about the dog going to the house or whatnot that they, and I was leaving the next day. So I had to pretty much put my foot down, like, don't you dare take these dogs out without a leash ever again, Mom. You know, what do you want from me? Apparently, I'm just supposed to be perfect when I'm basically dealing with a 70-year-old petulant child who, you're not the boss of me, I can do what I want, right? And then if I get upset with her, I'm verbally abusing her. So, that's what I, why do you, what, there's nothing in there. You know? And that is why, you know, the woman, the people on my side would be like, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, you know. And Joe would say, yeah, like it's verbally abusive to a kid if you yell at him, don't put your hand on the hot stove. Don't take your dog out without a leash. You, she's, she has run away before. It can happen again. Why are you clawing on the window? The mirror. Hmm? I guess my friends left early. I'm not hearing back from them. Originally, they were supposed to leave at, like, I think she, she they said, like, um, 4 o'clock in the morning. They're driving, so they were supposed to leave at like 4 to drive where they're going. And, um, them and their doggy. And, and then, when I, I needed to say goodbye to her, and then I needed to make sure I had her cell phone, I said, I said, um, no, 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 we're going to leave Tuesday instead. So I figured maybe it was Tuesday for the one. I think they already left. I doubt they went out partying when they're supposed to be leaving. I mean, they may have, but I don't think so. I think they left. And it's my own fault. That they were they home all day today. I just didn't go over there. I thought I could just go over at the nighttime. Remember, I don't have fucking keys. I can't go and chat. So I'm not going to leave Omar here alone for hours or something and go chat or whatnot. I just... I wanted to say goodbye, I wanted to hug him. I'd never see him again. You know what I mean? Probably won't. Oh, that's another thing, yeah. You think when I'm here twiddling my thumbs, doing absolutely fucking nothing day after day, not even knowing what's going on in the world, not having a computer, not having TV, nothing. I won't be thinking how tempting it would be just to, if, if, to, to not have him. But the idea of that fills me with just, you know, Joe, Joe doesn't understand that. Especially now, when I've been completely just fucked over big time. Joe would be like, get rid of Omar. I can guarantee you, Joe, if, if it, it, it would even have persuade him under the circumstances, he would let me go there. Like I said, I get my thousand a month, so I'm not costing him anything. He wouldn't let me go there indefinitely, you know what I mean? But it doesn't matter. I don't I don't want to give him up. And this just all sucks. It just sucks. We wouldn't be having this fucking conversation if the law was compassionate and would force Auntie to treat this like a landlord-tenant situation where she wouldn't have the right to shut the fucking utilities off on me, where she would be forced to pay them just as she would have to do with her tenants if they didn't pay the rent and she needed to evict them, you know? And like I said, I don't want to be here. It doesn't matter if she says she won't come here. The fact is that it's sickening that she has a right to. That she can technically come in here anytime she wants to. Do you know how that makes me feel? Do you think I can grieve for my mom or heal or do anything at all when I'm here and reminded constantly of what my life became? 
in an instant? I can't. All I want is to get out of here and I don't have the money to do it. I don't have any money at all. Just a small amount and actually I owe that to the attorney if he decides to collect on it.
double check everything. I make sure that there's nothing possibly on the floor that he could get to eat. Okay? And choke on or whatnot. I did have no right to do that. Remember, she also accidentally, in quotation, didn't leave the keys when she knew that I had no keys. See? I have friends that think she did it on purpose. It doesn't matter if she did it on purpose or not. The fact is, it's just disrespectful. That's something you, if I'm nice enough to leave the keys instead of forcing you to, to use a locksmith to get in, like she threatened to do in the note, she's like, if you want to make this difficult, if I have to get a locksmith, I, I will, and I, come, I need to come get you mom's furniture. You know, she's just a fucking bitch. She's a fucking bitch who pulls the wool over everyone, the eyes of everyone she knows. And she looks like a fucking hero and a fucking saint and just wants to make her sister well again the whole nine yards. Yeah. You didn't take her into your home where you'd be cooking her meals and she'll be sitting down with your husband every night, did you? And you know. But my mom wouldn't want that anyway. She wants her own fucking apartment. She loves you to death because you just, just think she's perfectly fine and I'm the reason that for all her breakdowns.
movies, I would be even more desperate to get out of here. And it's just the whole thing where even if she says she won't come here, the fact is she has the right to come here every time she wants. She disrespected me by taking my dog out of the bathroom and not putting it back in, you know. She could have put his life in danger if I had left something on the floor and didn't, and didn't worry about it because someone was going to be in the bathroom all day. Or I told you, Omar follows people out. I bet, it, you know, he got out with my mom's church friend that time because she didn't listen to me. When I said, you know, that Omar will get out or whatever, she wanted to leave. She didn't realize that suddenly, because it's her fault, he followed her out. She didn't think he'd do it because no one wants to listen to me about Omar. And he could have run the street and got killed on the same day that, you know, that, that we're trying to, me and the church woman, are trying to convince my mom, sweet talk my mom, into going to the hospital so we don't have to call them Omar. Can you imagine? I got the cops get me in here, and then I come in and I'm almost running around. He wasn't in the bathroom. I couldn't believe it. And when I talked to Angie on the cell phone, which I didn't want to do, but I had to tell her, you know, I'm here, and you locked, you didn't leave the keys. Oh, I'm sorry. You want me to bring him down? I'll still bring him down. No, it's all right. The police are on the way. Oh, bitch. And then she was talking to me, and I'm just listening, yeah, and this and that, or whatever, blah, blah, because I haven't read the note, so she's giving me indication of what the note said. By this time, I'm good and drunk, so I, I decided to read the fucking note. It upset me as much as I knew it would. But yeah, and she, uh, when we were talking on the phone, she said, oh, yeah, I let Omar out to run around, but he, but you neglected to say you didn't have the courtesy to put him back in the bathroom. Jesus. Yeah, that'll be good, huh? <laughs> Christmas week. The week that my aunt, you know, the, the final slap in the face, she turns the heat electricity off on me. I told you I'm a reporter of the office. Don't know what the end result that will be, but I'm done with this shit. Me, Omar! Come on. Really bad nightmares last night. Really bad. I was asleep and then jerked and woke up and he's at my feet. I'm like, God, I think I kicked him. Not intentionally. He didn't cry out or anything, so I couldn't have hurt him. But it was like, I'm sure it startled him. I was having nightmares and I woke up in like a panic and. I mean, really, really bad nightmares. Like, I don't think it had even to do with people. The creatures were, you know, just bad nightmares. Having to do with, like, creatures or evil or hurting me or, I wonder if they had their Christmas thing. When did my mom get out? My mom got out. Just last. Last Wednesday. Yeah. They may have had their little Christmas thing yesterday. The family. They can talk about how horrible Laura is. Or, or the other side is just to, to you know, pretend that I don't exist, whatever. One or the other, maybe a little of both, who knows. They may have had it yesterday, that's the week before Christmas, or they may have already had it 
when my mom was still in the mental hospital. Maybe I've had it like two weeks ago. Or maybe they didn't have it at all. Who knows? My one who died of the good aunt, the one who died of pancreatic cancer, was alive. And I was, you know, grown up and even into my 20s and we always had the Christmas thing. Not on Christmas. We'd have the, the, our side of the family on. Um, you know, sometime before, week before, two weeks before, so who knows. People are pretty much all dead to me, so. Joe knows how I feel. He's the same way with his family. He doesn't care. He says he'd rather, you know, he's he follows Alex Jones and. and and Mike Adams and, and all of that and whatnot and and, um, and he's not gonna he's, it's not even worth it to get together with his family as far as he's concerned. They're all probably they're 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 all super super religious and and they just are into just a um, he's a Joe's a musician and the guys are all into just all they care about is football and things like that. He says it's, he's he doesn't care. You know, it's not worth it all the phoniness and whatnot. He'd rather just, um, you know, he's a sensitive artist and he doesn't have anything in common with his family. And his parents are dead and he's, his extended family is like, it's not worth it, fuck it. Right? Anyway, Donald's mama used to think that Donald's drunken asshole was gonna roll over on you in his sleep and not realize. Neither grieve nor heal while here, so Oh no, we're gonna start trying to get the stuffed animals again, Omar. Oh, yep, my two bird girls is going to be 
be on. And I won't be able to watch it on demand because there will not be no more on demand. There will be no more Comcast. There will be no more internet. There will be me going to the library maybe once a week if I can drag my ass there. And here there will be nothing. Girls, bye bye.